Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Today I want to continue the study of the book of Galatians, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. In fact, today I will complete the study and then offer a, a, co a conclusion. Uh, I'm going to pick up where I left off last time, uh, chapter 6, beginning with verse 13. Uh, I expected to have the last video uh, that I did yesterday um, as a conclusion, uh, except that the computer malfunctioned and uh, it just stopped recording it at that point. So uh, maybe it's better. Uh, I can finish up with um, the remaining verses and then uh, take a little bit of time to give you my uh, conclusion on, on this whole subject. So here we go. Chapter 6, verse 13. Oops. How did that happen? Okay, here we are. Beginning with verse 13. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised, that they may glory in your flesh. So, uh, they're just so spiritually blind, um, thinking that, well, they got circumcised. So, uh, of course, that's that's the uh, in, the initiation and the uh, uh, into Judaism. Um, but once you're circumcised and you you become a Jew, the work begins. Uh, all of the, the rules and regulations and laws and commandments and Judaism and the rituals and ceremonies and tradition, all of that is put on you, all that burden. And for these Judaizers to um, think that they're, they've been able to follow all of Judaism perfectly and, and they're, 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 uh, they're doing really well is very naive on their part and uh, it shows a lot of uh, self-righteousness, spiritual pride, and hypocrisy. And now they want to impose that on the Gentile believers. But uh, let me look at that in the Amplified. It says, uh, For even the circumcised Jews themselves do not really keep the law, but they want to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your, your flesh, that is, in the fact that they convinced you to be circumcised. So that's really what it's all about. It's all ego, pride. Uh, it's just uh, false religion, false uh, teachers. It's a, it's a big mess. Uh, verse 14 in the KJV, But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. So Paul's not going to boast in any religious works in his circumcision or in his uh, uh, history of being able to follow Judaism as well as anybody could. He's not going to boast in that. He's going to boast in the cross. He's going to boast in Jesus. He's going to give all the glory and praise to Jesus. Uh, 14 in the Amplified says, But far be it from me to boast in anything or anyone except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. So Paul is not concerned with uh, you know, um, ca careers and, and uh, acquiring wealth and uh, having a wife and family and all the, the things that uh, concern, consume your average person. These are the pursuits that we all have uh, living in the world, but Paul, he says he's been crucified and all that. He's not thinking about anything except Jesus, the crucifixion, the gospel, and he focuses entirely on that. His life is entirely focused and dedicated to that. Uh, verse 15, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So whether someone is circumcised or uncircumcised, 
it, it, there's no value one way or the other. Uh, the only thing that has value is, are you a new creature in Christ? And were you born again? Did you receive the Holy Spirit of God through faith alone in Christ alone? Uh, verse 15 in the Amplified says, For neither is circumcision anything of any importance, nor uncircumcision, but only a new creation, which is the result of a new birth, a spiritual transformation, a new nature in Christ Jesus. Verse 16 in the KJV, And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them and mercy, and upon the Israel of God. Uh, what rule is he referring to? Verse 16 in the Amplified, Peace and mercy be upon all who walk by this rule, who d discipline themselves and conduct their lives by this principle, and upon the true Israel of God, that's uh, the Jewish believers. So um, the, the principle, of course, uh, who walk by this rule is, is the principle he laid on the previous verse that that uh, uh, what circumcision, uncircumcision, Judaism, all this stuff, that there's no value in any of that. The only thing that has value is the new birth, is the cross of Christ that makes it possible for a new birth. Uh, verse 17, the KJV, From henceforth let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord. Let no man trouble me. Well, he's been troubled. He has been uh, persecuted. He has had these Judaizers being a thorn in his flesh, um, uh, tampering and spoiling his work in preaching the gospel, the true gospel, that salvation is a free gift. No works are required that, that we're, uh, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. And these Judaizers say, Paul's a false apostle. You've got to follow the law. It, you're not justified by faith alone. You've got to have works, particularly the works of Judaism. You've got to practice Judaism. So these people have been troubling Paul. And uh, as I've said several times before, uh, the thorn in Paul's flesh is the constant uh, badgering and uh, uh, spoiling of Paul's, all Paul's uh, efforts in his churches by the Judaizers. Uh, verse 18, Brethren, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Okay. Well, uh, that's the uh, end of the scriptures on uh, Galatians. Uh, I'd like to First of all, uh, I, I want to repeat the um, uh, statement I've said several times in these videos, is that I hope you either have watched or will watch this entire series of videos, the book of Galatians, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. Start with the introductory video. It's uh, only a, about 28 minutes long, but it it gives you an overview of the problem. Now I'm going to today uh, take a little time to uh, make a conclusion. Um, some of you may be wondering, well, why is this so important? Brother Luke, this, you, you seem to be on a, on a crusade uh, to, to, make, to make this point. And uh, yes, it's true, I am. Uh, I made a series called Paul Onlyism Debunked. I made another one titled uh, J James and Paul, The Shocking Facts. Another one titled uh, Early Church History. Another one, Early Church Heresies. Uh, another one, Early Church uh, Creeds. Uh, uh, another one, Verse by Verse Commentary on the Book of Acts. Uh, and all of these are all working together to make this very point that I'm going to tell you now. This is so important because I haven't made a commentary on the book of James. I uh, refer to it. 
I refer to it all the time. Uh, if I did make a commentary on James, it would be absolutely critical in every way. Um, so, and why? Why would I say such a thing? Uh, I believe the book of James has been misunderstood historically, certainly today, at this place in time, in America, in this millennium, this uh, book of James is absolutely misunderstood. One side uses the book of James to prop up the uh, false teaching of lordship salvation. James is their go-to book because it explicitly says um, a man is justified. Here it is. You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Uh, James also said that uh, faith without works is dead. These are the verses that the Lordship Salvationists rely upon to support their damnable heresy. So the book of James is being misused by the Lordship heretics and there's other points of scripture that, that they use, but James is the primary go-to book. That is the foundation of this heresy. Uh, and then you've got a lot of very well-meaning, sincere saints. Uh, many of you on YouTube, I, I know of all your efforts to try to explain James and make sense of James because we want to, we want to believe that, uh, there's no contradictions in the Bible and that there's uh, no false uh, teachings in the Bible. But uh, all through the book of Acts, we, we have uh, examples of false teachings in the Bible. The Bible is full of false teachings. Acts chapter 15, verse 1, the Judaizers say, you cannot be saved unless you're circumcised. That's a false teaching and is in the Bible. Uh, the Sadducees, said there is no resurrection. That's a false teaching. It's in the Bible. So we have a record, um, especially in the book of Acts, but, but in, in Acts and, and, and Galatians and Romans, especially, we, we find a record of the false teachers and we have to learn to differentiate between the false teachings and the, the, the true teachings, the, the real gospel. And so, even though people are sincerely trying to make sense of James and they're trying to reconcile James so that James is not in conflict with Paul. Oh, James and Paul, are they're, they're in agreement. Uh, it's, it's just that James, this is one of the favorite positions to explain James, that uh, James is talking about being justified in the sight of man. And Paul is talking about being justified in the sight of God. Well, I don't care how many times people argue that. I will never, ever agree that a person is justified. That means that we, we recognize them, acknowledge that they're a saved person. That's what justified means. A person will never be justified in my sight. And I hope you will employ this also. We will not acknowledge someone's salvation based upon their works. We will only acknowledge their salvation based upon their faith. What do they believe? Test yourself whether you be in the faith. How do you do that? It's not by how many good deeds you've done. It's by what you believe. Why should God let you into heaven? And you say, well, I... I became very religious. I go to church all the time. And here's a list of all the good deeds I've done. And if that's your plea before God, then you're lost. But why should you go to heaven? And you answer, because Jesus is my savior. He paid for my sins. He promised me eternal life. I'm relying on Jesus completely. I trust him. I believe him. I'm going to go to heaven. It's guaranteed. That's the proper belief system. That's the, that's the, uh, uh, the truth. So, uh, if you want to teach that James uh, is just teaching that you're justified 
by by your fellow man, by your uh, by the other believers, by your works. That is a heresy. Uh, you're not justified by you. Justified means saved. You're not saved by your works. Uh, and a person will be justified in, in man's sight the same way they're justified in God's sight by what they believe. God knows what they believe. We don't really know. We just have to listen. We ask them and we listen. And if they have the right confession of faith, we will accept that. So on one hand, the book of James is being misused by people being contortionists, trying to force square pegs into round holes, trying to make James agree with Paul when it, there clearly is a dispute between James and Paul and Paul and the Jerusalem church. And it's documented all through this series. I've given you examples on it. Uh, now, one thing that you, many people do not realize is that James was the first book penned so say the church started uh, at 30 AD, at the death, burial, resurrection, the ascension, and then we had Pentecost shortly after. Well, uh, at the first time any of the books in the Bible was actually penned by someone, James is the earliest. Um, so James was writing his belief system, what he believed, based upon the very beginnings of church history in Jerusalem. Well, the situation at that time was that, you know, James says he's writing to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. There's no mention of Gentiles because this was written even before Gentiles were in the church. It took 10 years before Gentiles were even in the church. 10 years before, uh, after Pentecost, before Peter was sent to Cornelius to preach to the Gentiles. So James was written to the, the 12 tribes because there's no Gentile believers. So it's solely based upon the Jewish believers who are all practicing Judaism because they're Jews. They didn't stop practicing Judaism just because they believed in Jesus. They thought they should continue practicing it. But Paul confronts them and says, you can't divide your faith between Jesus and Judaism. You've got to choose faith or works. And, uh, uh, so James wrote what he believed and what the church thought in the early years of church history. Um, now, James is not a, was not a stupid man. I believe he was very, very intelligent. I, I believe when you when you read his letter, it's very well written. And it's not like a person that's ignorant that doesn't know how to compose a sentence. So if James was really telling us, well, you're, what, the truth is, I agree with Paul. Why did, why did he just come out and say this right from the beginning? Why didn't he say that uh, I believe that we're saved by faith alone in Christ alone? Um, that's, that's the gospel. But in order for people to not think we're a bunch of hypocrites, so that as our fellow man looks at us, how, how we're perceived by our fellow man, so that we can be justified in our fellow man's sight, uh, let's do a lot of good works. That's the least we can do. And plus, uh, if you're a bunch of hypocrites, then people are gonna laugh at you and say, well, why would I wanna be a, a, a Christian? They're just a bunch of hypocrites. Um, James could have expressed it that way in his letter and made it real clear. Then we wouldn't have to be arguing about the real meaning of James. But James was not a stupid person. If that's what he believed, if that's what he really was teaching in, in James, instead of so many of us, and I've done the same thing. For years, I tried to make James agree with Paul. And I adopted all the same techniques. I had probably five or six videos on James explaining it all the ways that you, you all have explained it. Uh, that James is writing as a pastor, not an evangelist. That James, James is, is, uh, is writing about being justified by in, in man's sight, not in God's sight. It's not about salvation. It's 
Um, it, all these different th ways that we've tried to make James fit. But James doesn't fit with Paul. Uh, and this is, if you watch my playlist, Early Church History, you'll see not only have I documented this in this series about the um, uh, all the scriptures that support this this uh, long dispute over the role of Judaism in the church and the and and Gentiles in the church or not. This was a, a long dispute that lasted decades, at least thirty years or more, and it's documented in the scriptures, in the Book of Acts, in Galatians, in Romans, uh, in Hebrews. All of that you put it together. And it's as clear as day. Um, so, but what James could have expressed it, he was intelligent enough, he could have expressed it in a way that, well, everybody can see that James agrees with Paul. They're saying exactly the same thing. But he didn't, he didn't express it that way. And the way he expressed it is, ye see then how that by works a man is justified. And that justified is a word we use for salvation. He was justified. A man is justified. That means you're saved. You're saved by a man's works and not by faith only. I've had people say to me, well, Luke, uh, uh, where in the Bible does it say uh, you're, you're saved by faith alone? I mean, those exact words. And of course, the Bible does not say you're saved by faith alone. When you, the Bible does not say, quote, you're saved by faith alone, unquote. There's not a portion of scriptures that have those words in that order. But we do have a lot of verses that say we're saved by faith alone, uh, like uh, Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Without the deeds of the law, that means faith alone. So it clearly teaches that, but it doesn't say it uh, explicitly. Whereas they, they say, well, in James, it says specifically, clearly, that a, uh, um, by works a man is justified and not by faith only. James clearly is stating we're not saved by faith only. Paul is clearly saying we are saved by faith only. We conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Well, guess what was the second book penned in the Bible, in the New Testament? The second one was Galatians. Galatians was written after James. I believe Galatians was Paul's answer to James and the Jerusalem church. And so as you go through this, if you've completed it, this is the last video in the series, so hopefully you watched it from the beginning. You should understand all the points in this uh, book of Galatians that reference this, uh, uh, the men from James and the dispute that was going on, the disagreement. Now, so we've got uh, James saying what they believed in the very beginnings of the church before Gentiles were in and before Judaism was discarded. Um, and then we got Paul saying, no, James is wrong. Uh, we're, we're saved by faith without the deeds of the law. So Galatians is the answer to James. And, and then the follow-up, I believe Paul wrote Hebrews, Paul goes further and elaborates it. Uh, by the way, I'm not just talking about circumcision and the Sabbath. I'm talking about temple worship and animal sacrifices. All of that has to be discarded. Don't put faith in any of that as a Christian. So Romans, I mean, uh, Galatians and Romans, you could put them together almost like they're the same book. Uh, uh, Romans, I mean, Hebrews um, and Galatians. So um, then the book of Acts, it records all the events of the disputes and shows you this transition that took at least 30 years to go through. And that's really not only about the book of Acts, what the book of Acts is about, but that's what I've been emphasizing throughout this teaching on Galatians. Now, I believe that 
Um, um, the, the people who put the Bible together, I'm not challenging the books that should be in the Bible. I accept all the books, uh, 39 and 20, uh, 27. Yes, those are the books. But the order that they appear in, in the Bible, uh, if it was up to me, it would have made more sense to put them in the order that they were written or the order that, that of the events as they were taking place. Uh, um, I think that the first book should should not be, um, well, you got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But let's say after that, you should have James, then Galatians, because you see what James was saying and you see what Paul was saying. And you can clearly see, I've got a book, I mean, I've got a video in my series, uh, Shocking Facts About J James and Paul. One of the, one of the videos shows a argument going on between James and Paul. And I, I play two characters. I'm playing James and I'm playing Paul. And like they're arguing back and forth just by simply quoting their writings. So I hope you'll watch that. But so the first book, if I, I had my way, James would be the first one, and then Galatians would be next to it, and then Hebrews would be next to that. And you would clearly see what James was saying was corrected by Paul in Galatians and Hebrews. And then the book of Acts would be next, because that's what Luke did. Luke did a methodical historical record of the first 30 years of church history, and he documented uh, the transition that the church went through. And the transition was, in the beginning, it was Jews only, no Gentiles. Jews practice Judaism and believe in Jesus. You've got to be a practicing Jew and believe in Jesus. That's what the way the church was in the beginning. Ten years later, God told Peter, we're letting the Gentiles in. Go talk to Cornelius. So Gentiles began coming in. That was disputed by James and the Jerusalem church. They didn't want it. They didn't want to have anything with Gentiles. They were taught for centuries that they need to be separated from the Gentiles. They were unclean. But God told Peter, nothing's unclean. So Peter realized that the dietary laws uh, no longer apply. Segregation from the Gentiles no longer applies. We have fellowship with the Gentiles. They're equal to us, the Jews. Uh, and then, uh, so the, the Gentiles, the heir of the Gentiles uh, being separated and not part of it, that was corrected. But I think grudgingly, I think the Jerusalem church, the, the Judaizers, they never really wanted to accept the Gentiles unless they would convert to Judaism. That's really what the Judaizers were doing, saying you've got to get circumcised. You've got to get circumcised. How many times... Has that said in Acts and Galatians? Uh, and then once the Gentiles started becoming believers, uh, you have the problem of, well, what are we really supposed to believe? Paul says it's faith alone. And James is saying that you can't, you're saved, you're justified by your works and not by faith only. So you had these two factions, the people, the religionists, the Lordship Salvationists, just like we have today, and the, the, the free gift, uh, uh, free grace believers like we have today. The, the, the problem really never went away. We've always had a faction, a, quote, remnant of true believers who believe in salvation by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. There were some of them in the beginning of the church, and there were some of them throughout church history, and there's some of them today. But the vast majority were uh, never believed correctly. They always believed that faith in Jesus is not enough, that some kind of religious practices is required. In the beginning, it just happened to be there all the rules and regulations of Judaism. Okay, so that's it. That's why this is so important. Uh, I hope if you have not seen the other series, you will watch uh, my, my series, uh, uh, Early Church Creeds, Early Church Heresies, Early Church History, Shocking Facts About James and Paul, um, 
the, the book of Acts, a verse by verse commentary. Paul only isn't debunked. Um, and of course, this one, uh, Galatian, the book of Galatians, a verse by verse commentary. And if you do watch all those, you'll see how uh, everything fits together. All the pieces of the puzzle are completely put together. And to me, there is no uh, confusion. It's as clear as could be. And I want you to understand it that way too, so that you are not either uh, deceived to be a lordship salvation, thinking that James is right, that we're justified by our works and not by faith only, uh, or that you're not deceived to, to think that well, James didn't really mean that. He really meant something else. And uh, we can make, James, make sense of James. Don't, don't twist the scriptures trying to force James to agree with Paul when clearly throughout all the scriptures we see documented argument and disagreement in the early church. Thank you for watching. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus.